guys, welcome back to Passive Money. My name is Alex, and over there is Kirby. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about um, is it expensive to travel internationally? Now, Kirby, you have visited probably every country in the world, but so you might have more knowledge on this. But um, just from my experience, um, I would say that it depends uh, from this recent trip that we took to Colombia. But what, you, what would you say? from being to different parts, you know, first world, second world, third world countries? Uh, no, nah, I've been, uh, I believe I've hit every continent but Australia. I haven't hit Australia. So I still got a ways to go. Okay. Um, but is it is it expensive to travel? It depends on, it depends on what tickles people fancy. Some people believe that, oh, if I travel international, I got to travel first class. But just in general, just to get from point A to point B, I found trips and pre-COVID, this pre-COVID, and you know, during COVID, I found places like going flying from Miami to Dusseldorf, Germany, cheaper than flying from Florida to Colorado. So it's just different strokes to different folks. Just like some people take discount airlines. Uh, you know, nationally, you know, Spirit, uh, JetBlue and things like that. There is discount carriers for international flights. The only thing that adds the extra cost is, you know, maybe buying, a, you know, getting a passport or something like that. But it's the, you can still find value everywhere. It's not a, but some people, you know, have that notion that if I'm going to travel internationally, I need to go with the group or I need to go this or that. But for me, I found, I found sometimes I've literally found cheaper flights, especially the Eurowings flight from Miami to Germany. I paid one way. I paid as low as $236 one way. So, so I can't get that nowhere in the United States trying to get somewhere domestically for that price today. Yeah. Um, like this trip was actually cheaper than a trip that we took to like California, um, right. which was um, surprising. Cause I mean, just growing up, I always heard like, Oh, if you have to have like $10,000 if you want to fly international or like do a trip across seas. And it's not true. I mean, the only thing I can think of that would be the case with that is people that travel and then they stay at like American resorts in those countries which right. I think in, if you're doing that, it kind of defeats the purpose of going to that country in a way because you don't experience the actual country itself. But um, Absolutely. the tickets, I think, I mean, we took, gosh, it was, it was like four or five different flights around that country. And for a total, I think it was $1,300 for like four different flights. Um, and then food there and everything else was just, way undervalued with American money um so my I mean that's my experience on it with just Colombia and maybe other countries in South America I think Argentina and Peru from what I've heard are a little bit more expensive um but I would say as I said in the beginning I think it depends just where you're going and where you're staying and how you're spending your money uh, but I wouldn't say that it has to be expensive and I agree with you 100%. Um, the first part that you said that was very key is if you go to the, all these foreign countries and stay at American resorts, you've lost the luster of your going. You might as well stay in the United States if you're going to do that. I mean, me and my family, my goal only when I go to different countries is to go where the locals are at. I don't want to go with the tourist attractions and stuff like that. Because, of course, everything is super high priced. I want to go where the locals at. The locals know where the cheap stuff is at. And I want to go hang out and party and stuff like that. I remember going to Cozumel and everybody sitting there at the pier, at the dock, and doing all what the, the tourist attractions was. The first thing I did, I beelined to the cabs. And the first thing I told the cab, and I said this in any country I go to, take me where the locals is at. And then, you know, they take me where the locals is at. I have a great time. And, you know, everybody, you know, Fear mongering, of course, listening to the news and stuff like that. Oh, if you go here, you're going to get kidnapped and killed and stuff like that. 
for me, my experience, I'm only speaking of my experience, is I always ask to take me where the locals at. The locals are well welcoming, you know, great conversations, you know, some, of course, maybe broken English or whatever, but we still can have a dialogue and talk about different things. And contrary to popular belief, everybody, no matter what country you're in, they're trying to learn English. So it's not like you're going to go to some place and Somebody just going to be blasting you with their native tongue. They're going to still try to translate something in English. And they're going to make sure you have a good time because they want more people to come to that area. It's not going to be, oh, it's, I mean, I'm, now I'm not saying going to, like you was in Colombia. I'm not saying go to the crime written areas of Colombia. But I'm just saying where the locals go. The locals know where it's safe at. Let's go where the locals at and, you know, intermingle with them. You know, me, I love to partake. And you know the the finest cervezas in the world, but I want the local I want the locals version of it, and and they know where it's at, and and they're partaking in it, so they're not paying arm and leg fees that you'll pay at American Resort for it. They're still partaking in it and paying the fees, a uh, reasonable fee. You know, Cuba, Dubai, everything like that. It's 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 a time and place for it all, but don't. If you travel internationally, don't be scared of what they say on the news. Oh, if you travel there. I remember one one time I took off and went to Russia. And everybody was saying, oh, you in Russia. Oh, my God. You hear what they say in the news. And it was like the all-time greatest time ever. I mean, you. I met people. And, of course, me being, you know, I always say I'm American. I'm American U.S. I don't go by the African-American term. But seeing other people look like me and, you know, talking to them and asking them, how is it like here and stuff like that? And they love it. You know, you know, the Brittany Griner situation is going on, but that has nothing to do with race at all. That's all political. That's nothing to do with race. But it's a good time. It's no, you know, harsh feelings or nothing like that. Um, it's an all welcoming environment. People love to be around Americans. Period. They love to be around Americans. And I'm not saying love to be around Americans because, oh, they think they can rob us because they think we have money. They don't look at us like that unless you go over there pulling out wads of cash saying, hey, I'm rich. They don't. They just look at you as a normal person. It's not a, it's not a, a hey, let's see how we can get this stupid American type deal going. It's a good all out thing. And, you know, you went to Columbia and I remember talking to you before you started traveling a lot. And I was like, just go do it. I was like, just go do it. You know, I know you was waiting for uh, when you had $10 billion in your account to go do it. I was like, no, just go do it. You'll be fine. And then now you're starting to do it. And now you're seeing, starting to see things that like, oh, this is just normal. And this is yeah. a different culture, but it's a lot of things you get to see. Yeah. Like one point you mentioned, um, like, especially going to where the locals are, like, and uh, how people won't take advantage of you because you're American. I think in the touristy areas where all the Americans are, then they're going to take advantage of you. But I think when you go into the country where people live and where everybody's at, they treat you like, I mean, they know you're not from there, but they treat you as if you're just another customer, another person on the street. They're not trying to take advantage of you. And I mean, I've felt maybe less safe in cities in America than I have when I was in like the actual bad parts Absolutely. over there. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I was told over there at one point when we were taking the train through the city that in one part of town we were at, they just said, put your phone in your jacket. I mean, in America, I mean, people steal your phones as well. I mean, it's, it's you know what I mean? Just because you're in another country doesn't mean like they're going to steal your phone in a worse way. <laughs> I mean, you could face the same kind of crime or be the same kind of victim of a crime in America as you could over there. And just visiting where the locals are too, you're going to find way better deals than you would in the touristy areas. Um, I mean, food over there was just compared to American money. I mean, $2 a plate. I saw some like street food items for 20 cents. So you can really actually get to, make your money go a longer way than if you're in a touristy area. Absolutely. And I, I remember I used to go, I mean, when I used to travel back and forth to Dubai and uh, I would usually wake up at two, three in the morning 
because of course I'm from Detroit, so I'm like, oh no, ain't nothing more hood than Detroit. So I would wake up and then leave the hotel and just say, take me to the worst part of the town. And then their worst part of town is like the suburbs of Detroit. Like, I mean, I literally, I mean, you might see, you know, a little trash in front of some, like I would walk through people's apartment buildings. I didn't care. It was just me by myself. No, no, uh, you know, no security and no crazy stuff like that. Just me by myself. No, you know, guys that was with me. And it was just normal. It wasn't, it was like, okay, it's trash. And they, they consider because people, you know, at apartment buildings, they don't want to hold the trash. And they too lazy to go outside and put it in a dumpster that night. So they'll set it outside their door and take it out the next morning. They consider that the bad part of the area. And I would just walk through there for hours and hours just to see. And that's when I was, you know, young and just thought I was just the biggest, you know, badass there was. And I would just go see if I can get into any conflicts. I wasn't starting nothing, but I just want to see what I would run into. But there was no conflict whatsoever. You know, people to see me, hi, you know, going about their business. I mean, DR, Dominican Republic, for people who don't know what DR is, and stuff like that, it still was the same instance. Yeah. It was never a, it was never a situation where it was, you know, oh, oh, that American, let's go kidnap him and take advantage of him. But I do see it, like you said, in touristy areas that they become targets there because they say, oh, they're staying in the tourist area and the locals think, or the criminals in that local area think, Oh, they stay in the touristy areas. They're paying more than what it usually costs. So, oh, they must have money. So they become targets. But me, when I hang out with locals, no matter what country I've been to, I've always hung out with the locals. And it's been a great time. I've drank with them. I don't participate in nothing but drinking. But I drink with them. I've, I've been obliterated sometimes. And I still made it back to my hotel. I still... I've never been robbed. I've never, and I've been a lot of places. And then when I say a lot of places, I'm not saying one country, two country. I've been a lot of places around this world and I've never had a conflict besides Australia. That's on my to-do list. But besides that, I've had no issues hanging out with locals at all. But again, if you listen to the mass media and things like that, you will think that that's the way you don't want to go. Yeah. I think you'll never know for sure unless you put yourself out there and, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, at one point in the city, I mean, this was like, I, get, I think this was where like the train station was and everything. And uh, there's, I just had to use the bathroom because we were going to be on, a, on the train for like a couple hours. And um, it's just out in the open. Like, so in a lot of places don't have private restrooms. And I was like, shoot. So we went and I mean, this place was like in rubble. Like, I mean, there's just bricks all over the place. It, destroyed buildings and everything and uh there's a guy like yeah yeah over there in the corner there's a bathroom and it's just like a little shack with like a bowl connected to the wall but I was like you know like I think as Americans or for some Americans I would say would feel unsafe in that area but it was like I mean to actually experience how people live there that's just how they live in those parts of the world I mean there's nothing to feel endangered about just because it's not too the American standard you know, I think people are maybe too pampered in first world countries. And just because something's not as comfortable in another country doesn't mean that it's necessarily unsafe or something of that sort. Right. And and to close it out, the thing I find that's funny, you know, they call these people, you know, second world and third world countries. But I always find out the Internet is way better than ours. The, I mean, that's just me. I mean, everywhere I've been, the internet has always been better than ours. I'm like, how I would I... say when I was connected, it was pretty fast. It was pretty fast. Yeah. Was connected. Yeah. I mean, when you connect it, it's like, what the hell? Where y'all get this from? This ain't this ain't spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> where you where I you know. get this from? And I, I find it amazing. And in the States, everybody's thinking it's and, and of course America, we live off internet, but it's it's way faster than anything I've ever seen in America. And I'm like, what the heck? Especially when my family lived in Europe. I was like, wow, this is this is speed speed. You know, you know, like how at the when you click something, when you click something to enter a website or something, you have that blue circle yeah. that you know takes a minute to before the site open. Over there, you click it and it just open, like, whoa, what you're moving too fast. Yeah. I ain't used to it. You know, so it's yeah. it's it's a different thing, but 
it's not as it's nowhere near as bad as that the media makes it seem. It's it's a great time. But yeah, you know, chilling with the locals would be more a cost effective way than going to all these touristy places. And I'm not saying that to, you know, put an open invite and saying, oh, I'll listen to Passive Money and they say go to touristy places and then something bad happened. I'm just telling you, we just telling you our experiences in these countries. It's not a, you know, indictment to say, hey, go do this, but it's nowhere near for us and our experiences as bad as it is, as is described in the media and how it is. And uh, of course you see people go abroad and then they are kidnapped and stuff like that. But to me, and this is just only the research that I've done. So do more research. It's usually they staying at one of the touristy areas. That's where it happens. At. It's not happening in, some local environment or something like that. And I've stayed at hotels in the what they described as the hood because me, like I said, I, I look to see if something's gonna happen, but I've I've stayed in, you know, four star, five star, two star, one star in other countries. And yeah. I've never had a problem no matter where I stayed. It was kind of comical because uh one of my brother in laws over there was like I mean, they were all welcoming, but he was like, you know, you have to be careful as an American. And I guess they tell them the same thing over there. He's like, because, you know, there's some parts where they'll kidnap you like as an American. And I was like, me being from Tampa, Tampa has some of the highest human trafficking rates in America. I was like, that's no different from where I'm from. And that just completely shocked him. Like, oh, it happens over there, too. Like, it just happens anywhere that you're at in the world. Is always great. Right. Absolutely. But with all that being said, please uh like and subscribe to this video, but comment in the comment section and tell me what your situation was like when you traveled abroad. Um, we want to hear about it, you know, see if it's you know mesh with what me and Alex are saying about traveling abroad or if it's contradictory what we're saying. But we love the dialogue and please comment in the comment section below. With all that being said, y'all have a good one. See you in the next video. See you guys.